Well, I have to say, the characters for Skaven and 4th Edition were pretty basic, weren't they? Well, part of the Vermin Lord, but hey, it's a great demon for you. The units, however, uh, they've got a bit more spice and interesting rules. Well, some of them do, but first off, we've got to start with the most basic of them all, yeah, and it's the Clan Rats. So, these are the mainstay of the Skaven Warriors. Drawn up in their hundreds to form vast, chittering hordes who overrun their fellows in sheer numbers. Still, they are all quite ill-disciplined and cowardly, and while a pack, they are phonetically overconfident, when things start not going their way, they will quickly round and try and save their own height. Now, there are six points a model, and had a minimum of five models with no maximum. Need pretty standard for Skaven, bar some select units. Stat line wise, they were movement five, Rem skill three, Fist skill three, Strength three, Toughness three, Ruins one, Initiative four, Attacks one, Initiative five. They came with light armor, shields, and swords base, and could have spears for half a point a model. They could also have a standing position, who were both 12 points. Now, special rules wise, they just had the typical strength and numbers rule, like all Skaven, but they could also have two poison wind globadiers and a warp fire thrower accompany them. Now, we'll talk about the Globadiers later on, as they could also be their own regiment, but the warp fire thrower we will discuss in War Machines in the next video. Now, if you're looking for a more elite unit, the Storm Vermin. These Skaven are black furred and much larger than most other clan rats and even other than Skaven. This gives them a fierce reputation, and they tend to be the royal elite and personal bodyguard of the Warlord. Now, they were a 0 to 1 choice, and 9.5 points a model. Yeah, get used to hearing half points in fantasy old rules, it was quite common. Stat line wise, they were movement 5, weapon skill 4, bliss skill 3, strength 4, toughness 3, ruins 1, initiative 5, attacks 1, leadership 5. They came with light armour and a sword base, but could have halberds for 2 points a model, great weapons for 2 points a model, and shields for 1 point. Now, their musician standard cost 19 points, but they could take a magic standard. Also, like clan rats, they could also be accompanied by two poison wing globadiers and a warp fire thrower. So, yeah, this the elite version of a clan rat, really, but still pretty good to have. Now, we're gonna move on to Clan Eshin, who's finally made their appearance with the Gutter Runners. Now, I actually struggled to find official pictures of the Gutter Runners. So, say hello to mine from that time period. These are adepts who are well trained in the skills, but have yet to master them, so they've worked together in small packs until the assassins believe they are truly ready to work alone. They tend to perform scouting, night raids, and ambushes on enemies, weakening them before the main army strikes. They are a 0 to 1 choice, as well as the Storm Vermin, and 12 points a model, stat line wise, movement 6. Women skill 4, Lesser skill 4, Strength 4, Toughness 3, Wounds 1, Initiative 5, Attacks 1, Leadership 7. Now, equipment, they came with a sword base, but could have an extra one for 1 point, Light Armor for 2 points, Throwing Stars for 1 point, Slings for 1 point, and Nets for 1 point, though the Nets just counted as a shield. Now, special rules wise, they were skirmishers, so didn't rank up, but could spread themselves out, making them harder to hit with shooting but their main rule was they were deployed after all enemy units were on the table. They would then be placed anywhere on the table, out of sight of the enemy, and not in their deployment zone. Now, next up, and this is going to surprise a few people who are not aware of your rules, the Clan Ashen Assassin. Yeah, they were a regiment choice, not a character in 4th and 5th. These are the black clad of Clan Eshin, who are rightly feared, as with their warpstone etched reaping blades, they are the masters of sneaking into a target's fortress and dealing with them swiftly and quietly. In battle, they hide within the masses of clan rats, striking out when the time is right. Now, they were 30 points a model, and movement 6, weapon skill 5, the skill 4, strength 4, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 5, attacks 2, leap 7. They came with Reaping Blade, which gave them a minus 2 save on the fire, and did D3 runes. Now, for special rules, they were in disguise at the start of the battle, hiding in a Storm Vermin, Clan Rat, or Gutter Runner unit. 
they would be hidden until the regiment was in close combat, when at the start of the combat, the assassin is revealed and placed in the front rank, striking the enemy. The turn they are revealed, they strike first before anyone else, targeting the models they have base contact with, including characters that you probably wanted to go for. Then combat was resolved normally, and for all future combats, mm, fights normally as well. For leadership, if they own a unit that flees, they can flee with them, or pass the leadership test to transfer to another unit within 6 inches. Up to two assassins can hide in each unit, so yeah, I could have quite a few skulking about the place. Now we need to look at the Skaven Slaves. The dregs of Skaven society. They are used to work in the forges and mines of Skavendom, but if too weak or feeble, they are either A. Made into food, or B. Taken into battle as glorified meat shields. They'll be put in front of the main army, making the enemy waste their ammo and spells on them before the clan rats, storm them, and other swarm paths to strike the enemy properly. Points wise, they are a whopping! Two and a half points. Wow. Stat line wise, movement 5, weapon skill 2, bliss skill 2, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, addiction 4, attacks 1, leadership 4. Oh, dear me. They come with swords base and have spears for half a point, slings for half a point, and shields for half a point. Now, if you really wanted, they could have a position or standard for five points, and special rule wise, well, as they are pretty much expected to die, when they flee or are destroyed, uh, the rest of the Skaven army doesn't care. Ah, oh, poor slaves. But, you know, a couple of 20 man units with some slings could be quite annoying. Now it's time to look at Clan Pestilence, and first off, the Plague Monks. These are the devout worshippers who had dedicated themselves to spreading corruption and decay in the name of the Horned Rat. In battle, they hurl themselves into a fray with fanatical ferocity, eager to bring death to their foes. They were 6 points a model, and movement 5, run skill 3, blitz skill 3, strength 3, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leadership 5. They came with hand weapons, and could have an extra one for 1 point, and light armour for 2 points. Their musician stands with 12 points, and one regiment in the army may have a magic standard. Special rules wise, they were all subject to frenzy, so with that extra hand weapon, plenty of attacks. But they could also be accompanied by Plague Sensor Bearers. Now, the Plague Sensor Bearers are the most fanatical and deranged members of Clan Pestilence given the honour, in quotation marks, of wielding a Plague Sensor into battle. They proceed the Plague Monks, polluting the air with foul fumes while swinging their sensors before moving to combat the foes in a frenzied state. They were 15 points a model, and you could have no more than half the size of the Plague Monk unit, so if you had 30 monks, you could have at most 15 sensors accompanying them. Stand line wise, movement 5, bonus skill 4, the skill 0, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leisure 5. So yes, they are cleared with the Plague Sensor, which was a flail that also had the Fog of Death special role. This had a 1 inch radius, and at the start of the close combat phase, you want a d6 for each model in the radius, and if higher than the toughness, or a 6, they took a wound of no armor saves allowed. The sensor bearers themselves are immune to this effect, but every other Skaven in your army is not, so keep that in mind. Now, they were skirmishers as well, but because of the fumes they spread, were minus 2 to hit with shooting instead of the usual minus 1. They were also frenzied like the plain monks, but also had hatred, so quite vicious in combat with those sensors. However, they must fight alongside a plain monk unit until they charge, and had to be within 6 inches of them at all times. If the plain monks flee, so do the plague sensors. Now it's finally time to look at Clan Mulder and their pack masters. These Skaven use their vast arrays of warp stone to create new and dangerous creatures to use in combat. The pack masters are specially trained to control and go their specially bred mutant creatures to strike enemies and not other Skaven. Unless they've been hired by other Skaven who then decide to forego the payment, in which case they'll probably leash their beasts on them in revenge. Now, the pack masters were 10 points a model, and they could lead either giant rats, who were 2.5 points a model, or rat ogres for 43 points a model. For each pack master, you could have 1 to 6 rats or rat ogres in the unit. Stat line wise, the pack masters are movement 5, ram skill 4, bliss skill 4, strength 3, toughness 3, ruins 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leadership 7. The giant rats are movement 6, ram skill 2, 
Ballista skill 0, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 3, attacks 1, leadership 4, and the Rat Ogres, movement 6, weapon skill 4, ballista skill 0, strength 5, toughness 5, wounds 3, initiative 5, attacks 2, leadership 5. Now, the Pack Masters had a sword and light armor, and could have another sword for 1 point. Now, for the Pack Masters, special rules wise, they had to lead the unit from the back. But they could still strike the enemy in close combat even from the rear, but they could also be struck by the enemy if they wanted instead of the rats or ogres. The unit also always used the pack master's leadership until they all died, and for missile hits you randomised them. 1 to 4 you hit the creatures, 5 to 6 you hit the pack masters, and my god the amount of times that happened. Now for special rules for giant rats, if they were to combat they always had to pursue the enemy due to how vicious they were. Also, they can easily overwhelm the enemy, and during combat actually wrapped around the enemy unit, even if beaten, surrounding them and getting more hits the following phase. Also, if they are destroyed, another Skaven don't panic, as they're just normal rats to them and the Skaven don't really care. Now, for rat ogres, being the giant salivating mutant rat beasts they are, they cause fear. They are also completely stupid. If they lose all their pack masters, they then suffer from stupidity for the rest of the game, and yeah, with a leadership of five, they're going to be drooling around quite a bit. Now we go to Clan Skyre and the Poison Wind Globadiers. Now, as I said, they could accompany other regiments, but also form their own small skirmishing units with their Poison Wind Globes, little glass spheres filled with lethal warpstone gas. They throw the globes at their enemies that shatter, fleecing the cloud of vapour, choking any who breathe it in. Either way, they were 20 points a model and movement 5, weapon skill 3, bliss skill 3, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leadership 5. Equipment wise, they had a hand weapon and their poisoned wind globes. These had a range of 6 inches and a 1 inch blast radius. You roll the scatter dice, and if you roll a hit, they hit. Otherwise, they scale a d3 inches, so didn't usually have to worry about them coming back onto you. Usually. Anything under the template was wounded at a 4 plus, with no armor saves allowed. Now, you could also lock them in close combat as well, which is handy, but this is where the usually they didn't come back to you meant, as yeah, in close combat, they kind of could. Yeah, well, escape them for you. Now, the globe and seals are sealed if a single unit were just skirmishes. But if attached to another unit, they had to remain within 6 inches of the unit at all times, and if the unit panicked and fled, so did they. They did have one bonus though, which was that they could not be targeted by any missiles as long as they were within 5 inches of the unit, give them some protection should they get in close and throw their globes. And that is their regiments. Some big differences with the likes of assassins being a regiment, but other things were made the same, like, well, a clan rat's always going to be a clan rat. Still, next time we move onto the Skaven War Machines and Unique Monsters. And yay! Finally get to talk about Skaven Tech again. That's the real fun stuff. See you then.